Hi everyone, I'm Ella, and today I'm doing my March wrap up. March wrap up, my April wrap up for the month of April. And since I have read about 14 books, I think this this um, month, and like it was a great reading month. I read a lot of books. This month was crazy with like, finals and studying, and it was just one of those crazy, crazy months. So I'm glad I still got a lot of reading in, and like yeah, I'm just so glad I got a reading in. So first month I read this so this month so this month was a reread by one of my favorite books and that is the orphan queen by jody meadows and if any of you have something like cut off back up back up oh, so if you haven't heard of this book or like read this book it's by jody meadows it's the, the orphan is by it's called the orphan queen it's by this girl named willa minor and she's uh she's part of this like rebellion group called the oh, oh, Ospreys and like this and she when she was little her, her kingdom got attacked her parents were killed and she was left the print lost princess she was like the heir to the throne and then ever since then she has been like an orphan and like late in the past few years she's been gained over the other orphans of like the lost kingdom I mean this kingdom that they were from and running around the neighboring kingdom that conquered their kingdom and like saving the, like helping the world and like regaining strength to reclaim their kingdom and I don't know, like, I don't know what much to say about it, it's just that it's an amazing book, and anyone who, should, anyone who loves fantasy, like, would love this book, like, I'm not even kidding, like, this book is incredible, like, I, like, I, like, didn't, I read, like, the synopsis for it, like, I got it from Lost Noble, like, a year, over a year ago, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, this book's incredible, like, 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 the synopsis is awesome, and then once I started, like, reading it, like, first page, like, it was, like, then I started, like, fight, like, it was, like, this battle scene, and, like, it was, like, Oh, so good, and, like, Willa Mina is, like, a really good, she's a really good character, but I mean, I'm sorry if I pronounced the other character wrong, and then there's this mysterious character called the Black Knife, too, and it would, like, her, the Ospreys, the group she's part of, it's kind of, they're kind of, like, they would run into him occasionally, but, like, they don't know they should trust him, because he hunts people with magic, and, like, Willa Mina has magic, um, but anyways, her and her best friend, Melanie, get sent to the king, to the castle as, like, lost, like, she's a lost duchess, like, pretends to be a lost duchess, and, um, and they just, um, to try to convince the king, I don't know, you should just read it, like, just read it, it's like, it's really cool, and then she's the crown prince, and his captain of god, and it's just a great, great book, so, if anyone loves fantasy or anything, so I thought that was not this, The Orphan Queen by Jodie Mouse. So that was a reread, because I, so I reread the book, so I get refreshed my mind for the sequel, The Mew King by Jodie Meadows. oh my gosh, this book was awesome like because the first book was so much like hidden identities like really know who anyone was and this book you see so much more of who people are so like they know people know who they each other are like the characters do so like they have like more like their relationships like more developed you know and there's trust and like issues and just things like they're just like well in this book and like oh i just love this book and like really see willamana's characters grow and like tobias and melanie and patrick and like just all the people in this book you just see more of them and like it's just a, it's just a good book, and you see so much more of, like, the world, and, like, the magic, and the problems of the wrath, and everything, so, if you haven't read the Orphan, the Mio King yet, if you haven't read the Orphan Queen, make sure you pick this book up, it's so much, it's so good, and, like, it's just a good, a good ending to this nice, cute du du duology, I was so sad when I first heard this was duology, I was like, no, oh, that's so good, though, anyways, the Mio King, by Joey Mouse, and the next book I read was just the, it was so much fun to read, was, Demigods and Magicians by Rick Ryden. Percy Annual to meet the Kangs. Oh my gosh. When I first heard this was going to be a bind up, I was like, oh my gosh. Finally been waiting for them to meet the Kangs. Like, I love, if anyone knows me, you know, I love Rick Ryden. You know, I love his books. So when this one came out, I got it the day it came out. Put it in the mail. It was amazing. Nice, it was short and sweet, but it was worth every word. I'm learning about this world, like, combining. And I love, like, each of Rick Ryden's, like, his world, his, all his stories would take place in one world, and, like, it's just, like, different pieces of it, and, like, I love when they combine, and this was amazing and good, so if you love Rick Ryden, if you read the Bang, if you read the Bang Chronicles, if you read the King Chronicles, and if you've read anything Percy Jackson, you should pick this up, absolutely incredible, Demigods and Magicians by Rick Ryden, um, and the next book I read was The Long Awaited Winner's Kiss by Marie Latuski, Latowski, I don't know, but, um, so this is the third and final book of the trilogy of the Winner's Curse trilogy, which other books are, uh, if you can see, the, like the Winner's Curse and the Winner's Crime, oh, they're really good. Um, 
yeah this is the third book it was definitely a great conclusion to those series and like just it really ended really well and like it's just like I really liked how I just liked how the book started out because I was afraid some things weren't gonna work out but things went well and it was like I liked the character development was so good in this book and if you haven't heard this book or the one that's cursed it's about about this girl in Castro and she's the governor's up as his daughter and so she lives this rich life in this like world it's a fantasy book um and then she gets by this slave called Aaron named Aaron and Aaron's uh his people the Hawani people have been in slavery for like some for a long time now by the Valorian people who are casual people and so like obviously it's not appropriate to have a relationship with a slave so like their relationship develops and you just see that through the winner's curse and then there's a bunch of rebellion and lies and betrayal and like Oh, it's so good, and I was like, just, just such interesting characters, Aaron and Kestrel, and like, very not like cliche. They're very different, and it's a very good story, and you told the both of the perspectives, so you definitely get to see both their point of views. And the winner's kiss was just an awesome, nice cherry on top. So winner's kiss, my little the the Kowski. And the next book I read was Raging Sea by Michael Buckley. This is the sequel to Undertow by him, which is like a dystopian, fantastical element book. I don't know, but like. I don't know, the first, it's basically takes place in, um, uh, New York, and, um, it's what it's called named Lyric Walker, and how she, it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic story, and, like, there's, like, these things, like, these, like, there's, like, some fantasy elements with, like, more people, kind of, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I don't know how to really describe it, but, um, this book is really good. And this is a nice little, like, the first one was good, but I really like Raging Sea. It was definitely, you got to see more of Lyric and who she was, because, like, I really liked Lyric's character. She was definitely very round and interesting. In this book, you just you definitely get to see more. So I have those in office, but Undertow by Michael Buckley is the first one, and this is the second one, Raging Sea by Michael Buckley. And then my next book was a little bit of a change-up for me in dystopians and fantasies all the time. I read America's First Daughter by by Stephanie Dre and, and Laura Kamoli. And this was a historical fiction book based off um john thomas jefferson's oldest daughter patsy jefferson or martha jefferson and how her story of her growing up with her father and like getting the politics and like just finding her way in the world into america like and like and just the, the controversial decisions he made and like the controversial decisions she had to face and just like what she had to do in life and like her just finding her way through life and it was very interesting it was very good i really thought it was a good book um, the ending was, like, I didn't, I wasn't super good on, like, the last half of the book, but the first half I really liked, but if you like historical fiction, you'll like this book, and if you like anything, like, colonial times, it definitely shows part of that, and so, if you like Thomas Jefferson, it's a good book to read. Patsy was definitely a really interesting character, she was a very interesting person, like, how strong she was, about how she dealt with things, it was very, like, interesting, like, not, like, I just, like, things you wouldn't think she would deal with, like, she did deal with them, and, like, how she dealt with them was very interesting, so, America's First Daughter by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamori. And then the next book I read was Mademoiselle Chanel, I know I got some, like, historical fiction novels this book, this month, by C.W. Gortner, and this is a historical fiction novel, it's based on, it's, like, a, it's based on Coco Chanel, Gabrielle Chanel, the, like, the, the, the designer, like her life and like from when she was like little to when she was older and it was very interesting like I never really knew anything about her like I really didn't know this is about her when I bought this book like I just didn't like the 1920s and I was like I love the 1920s like oh my gosh well really that's not what this book is about like at all it's about her life like Mademoiselle like it's about Coco Chanel's life and how she like just like basically about her whole life and like it's very interesting and like you learn a lot about her and like who she was and like it's just a good book it's an interesting book and so yeah good Mademoiselle Chanel like see you C.W. Gortner. And the next book I read, oh my gosh, like, this is so typical. So, if anyone knows, I love Santa Clara's book, and, like, when Lady Midnight came out, I went and got it. But at that day, I finished it, like, that morning, like, less than 25 hours for the book. So, it's like, I sped through it. So good. It was so good, though. I'm like, I don't know, but you beat it. I saw it, but I read mean, Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clara, one of my favorite books of all time by Cassandra Clara. It was beautiful and amazing, just like always. And if you haven't read Lady Midnight, you have to read it. Lady, if you haven't read Cassandra Clara, read it is so good like this book is amazing Vintage Claire is amazing so read it read it read it read it you have to it's so good it's incredible I love it so much you gotta read this it's a beautiful 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 book it's incredible and the next book I read after I got done like being a like book slump again like book slump like I just kept wanting to read Vintage Claire like I reread whole series all her series after Lady Night came out and then I reread that one 
last month, but I couldn't get into that again, like I wanted to. So I read Something Strange and Deadly by Susan Denod, and this book is, um, I don't know if you've heard of Susan Denod's Truth Witch, which I read, which is amazing. I read Any Hell as a trilogy, but the Something Strange, I haven't read the Something Strange and Deadly trilogy, like the whole thing, I've just read this book, and it was definitely good. I definitely like Truth Witch better, but, um, this is definitely interesting. It takes place in, like, the 1870s, like, when the film Vices took place. Oh, yeah. But it takes place in Philadelphia instead of London. But, and you definitely see, like, some of the similarities, like, with the culture-wise. Like, in this book, which is very interesting to see. Like, different, but, like, very interesting. And it's just Dana's take on it. And, um, but it was just very good. It was, it was good. I liked it. Um, it was definitely, I wish I had the other ones. And I could, like, maybe enjoy it more, like, to read it. I just don't have those yet. But it was good. I would like it. It's about this girl named Eleanor. And she, um, her brother is missing. Like, Tessa's brother was missing. And, um, but, like, this in Philadelphia, the dead are rising. The dead are rising. And she, like, needs help. And she, find, um, needs help to, like, find her brother and, like, figure out this problem with the dead rising. So she takes place to call these people called spirit hunters. And they are, like, people who protect the city from set supernatural forces. And, and she meets William Daniel. And then they, like, it's just things start from there. And it's just very interesting. And Eleanor is a good character. And yeah, from Lee Strange and Deadly by Susan Denner. And the next book I read, I'm so pumped for tomorrow. It's called Quantum Must of Fury, so I'm so excited. So I want to get that Saturday Mass Mood. And since I read this book in a day as well, I reread Queen of Shadows by Saturday Mass. When this book came out, I was like hyped for it. Oh, I did. And I read it in a whole day. And I love this book so much. So I was like, I'll go back and reread it and like just reread the book and like love this book even more. And just take my time with it. And I reread it. And I loved it. It was so much. And it got me a stage and a move. And I love Selena. And I love this book. And this series is so fantastical. And so amazing. So it's fantastic. And I love it. It's so good. So, Queen of Shadows. You all know what this is. Probably all played by these books. Because you haven't. You should. Burner Glass series. Stage of Mass. Amazing. So that's that. Just why it made sense to read The Court of the, reread the Court of the Roses by Stage of Mass. I love this book. We read it. Just loved it just as much. It's amazing. I love the whole synopsis of it. It's like absolutely incredible and it's absolutely amazing. And like if you haven't read this book, you should because it's incredible and it's amazing. And I just love it so much. So yes, A Court of Thorn Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Read it. It's amazing. It's lovely. Trevor is awesome and I love Tamlin and Lucian. They're all so good. So yes, it's A Court of Thorn Roses by Sarah J. Mass. And the next book I read, if you watch my other videos, you know I've read this book. I've read a lot of books this month, sorry. Um, but, so I reread A Storm of Zombies for the second time, for the third time. I love these books. If you really like Quantum Roses, you really would really like Storm of Zombies. It's very similar, it's very good, but it's only different take on it. It's incredible. So, so this girl named Cecile, and she is, like, this farmer, like, a farmer's daughter. She, like, lives in a small town, and she gets captured, and she gets taken to this place called Trolls under the mountain, and it's where all these trolls live, and she gets to marry the handsome crown prince of the trolls. And it just takes off there, and it's all like curse involved, and like a rebellion. It's incredible, and it's amazing. And you just need to read it. So, see, I'll just know my favorite couples of all time OTPs, exactly, always. And then I read Hidden Huntress for the second time. I read this book three times, I read this book twice now. Huntress is a sequel, it's just as a couple, it's just amazing. Read this book, it is incredible. By Daniela Jensen, Stolen Song on Hidden Huntress. And then, for the last book I read in the month of April is. The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier, which is a sequel to The Wrath and the Dawn. You can see it, yes. If you have read The Wrath and the Dawn, it's retelling The Thousand One Nights, which is like an amazing, cool story, like totally up anyone's thought, like up anyone's um, path. Um, anyways, I heard something. But this book is amazing. It's a great like sequel to it, great conclusion. I didn't know it was going to end, so it ended. It was amazing, it was awesome, and this book is like absolutely like, gorgeous. Like, look at that. That is incredible. So, anyways, read this. Rose and the Dacca by Renee Adia. So, Adia. So, that is all I have to say for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is like incredible reading month. I read like 14 books, I think. And I reread some. So, like, I don't know, read some. I read some. So, it was a good mixed up. And I'm really glad. Much of April was such a good reading month. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.